Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and BuzzFeed is absolutely worthless. Yeah, BuzzFeed stock not doing well at all. We talked about it earlier this week. They went public. They were hoping for big bucks, no whammies, and it's a disaster. The stock has dropped 40% in its first week and uh, it gets worse. Uh, it gets worse, apparently. There's a blunder preventing early BuzzFeed employees from even selling their shares. They can't even get out. Uh, we've got other media outlets saying that uh, BuzzFeed's bumpy listing signals what digital media is actually worth. Guess what? It's not worth much of anything. Twitter is roasting BuzzFeed stock. It's terrible. It's awful. Hasn't been a good week. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about it before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 245,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about pop culture. We take a lot of pot shots at some of these digital media outlets, including BuzzFeed, who, you know, five or six years ago was supposedly, supposedly valued at $1.7 billion. Now, BuzzFeed is one of a handful of these media companies that were big in the the mid uh, 20 teens, uh, they're trying to, to rustle up some more venture capital. And they thought they had like almost $300 million in cash and a whole bunch of investors pulled out before they went public on Monday. And uh, I think they started out at around $10 a share and now we're down to under six bucks a share just in the first week. So this is, <laughs> this is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster. And Look, I, I think this is part of that pendulum swing back to the middle we've been talking about. And it's taken a long time, but we're seeing a lot of studios and publishers and developers uh, kind of, you know, backpedaling on some of their idiotic decisions. And I think they're starting to realize that BuzzFeed and Vox and Vice, they're not uh, media outlets that represent middle America, the average consumer. You know, we're starting to see that Twitter is pretty worthless too. Twitter does not represent average people's opinions. The media keeps quoting Twitter, but only journalists and weirdos for the most part use Twitter. And I guess I'm a weirdo because I'm on here too. Anyway, <laughs> I've been on there since 2009 and back in the day, it actually Twitter wasn't terrible, but now it's not so good. Uh, anyway, let's talk about BuzzFeed employees. They were having a little bit of a party Earlier this week when they went public, they had pictures of them, you know, holding up signs and they were like, hey guys, this is going to be great. It's going to save the company. No, it's a dumpster fire. Absolutely. We had other employees, unionized employees that were pretty angry about them going public, but uh, uh, this might be the uh, kill shot for BuzzFeed, right? This is coming from Axios. Blunder prevents early BuzzFeed employees from selling their shares. Many early BuzzFeed employees remain unable to sell their shares, even though the company went public this past Monday. Why it matters, BuzzFeed stock has fallen more than 40%, and so far the company has given no indication that plans to compensate its former employees for their accelerating losses. <sighs> this is not about a lockup agreement, which applies to top company execs and current employees who have vested in exercise stock options. Um, this is an administrative blunder. Really, is it? An administrative blunder for former employees who are told their shares would not be locked up. Axios had, has reviewed email correspondence between BuzzFeed and former employees with vested and exercised options, some of which was first reported this week on Insider. Some ex-employees tell us they didn't receive all the emails. On November 23rd, the company wrote, at this moment in time, you don't have to do anything. We'll be in touch. Yeah, they always say that, right? The following day, employees received requests for documentation from Continental, the stock transfer agent hired by BuzzFeed, but nothing from BuzzFeed itself. That correspondence didn't come until Wednesday night. Shenanigans are afoot, I think. We can't have all these employees cashing out all at once when the stock is tanking, can we? The December 1st email says the stock transfer process would take three to five business days. That means if a holder filled out the paperwork immediately, they still wouldn't have had access to their stock when it began trading on Monday. Such a delay did not apply to other early BuzzFeed shareholders like venture capitalists, but it isn't unheard of. Between the lines, the big hiccup here is there was an extra paperwork step that ex-employees weren't told about until after the shares began trading. I could, I could be wrong. 
I could be wrong, but it sounds to me like they didn't want their employees dumping their stock. I, I could be wrong. Some received correspondence late Monday night from Continental, while well, some learned about it from BuzzFeed on Tuesday afternoon. The Continental email again talked about an additional three to five trading days. Some BuzzFeed employees who responded immediately to Continental may have managed to sell shares. Others, including some who waited for BuzzFeed's instructions, have not. In its Tuesday email, BuzzFeed blamed Continental for the mix-up, told ex-employees that we understand and sympathize with your frustration with this process. It did not and has not apologized. The situation is exacerbated by the steep price drop and a stock conversion ratio that already has caused some early employees to be underwater including those who worked at BuzzFeed before it became a unicorn. It's more like a goat, an ugly one-horned goat at this point. Axios called and emailed Continental, but was unable to get in touch with anyone there. The phone call involved longer than usual wait times. A BuzzFeed spokesperson declined to comment. BuzzFeed shares opened mostly flat this morning at 587 per share. The bottom line, startup stock options are about aligning interests between the company and employees for better or for worse, show of good faith by both sides. In the case of BuzzFeed, that faith has been broken. Ouch, dumpster fire. This is all of BuzzFeed right now, right? Because BuzzFeed has become synonymous with failure at this point. Uh, this is coming from the Financial Times. BuzzFeed's Bumpy listing signals what digital media is actually worth. Not a whole hell of a lot. Calculating the value of news and entertainment startups has been, until now, been about hype and not the bottom line. BuzzFeed is the WeWork of media. Go watch the WeWork documentary on Hulu. It's fantastic. And it shows you how it's all smoke and mirrors and how they, they get these activist types to get on board because they're all about the mission. And really, it's all about just buying time until you get some sucker to come along and buy your company. That's, that's the mission. That's the goal. Uh, <laughs> when John Peretti, the founder of BuzzFeed, took his 15-year-old media company public on Monday, it was a festive affair. Confetti shot in the air as Peretti posed for photos and the group's employees dutifully whooped behind him, holding up signs that read, Oh my God, win and glad we didn't sell the Waystar a cheeky reference to the fictional company from the TV drama Succession. The cheering ended there. <laughs> After initially popping up more than 50 cents in the morning, BuzzFeed's share price plummeted, ending the day down more than uh, 11%. Fell further 8% Tuesday, 2% on Wednesday, and 24% on Thursday. And here we are, guys, 587 a share. I don't, I don't think Reddit's going to save this one. <laughs> this should not come as a surprise for a listing that had already appeared doomed. Days before the stock went live, BuzzFeed ominously disclosed that the investors in its special purpose acquisition company, the SPAC, had fled the scene. <laughs> After finding out they had signed up to invest in BuzzFeed, they pulled out 94% of their money. So they didn't know it was BuzzFeed. They're like, oh, hey, this sounds really good, guys. It sounds good. E-commerce company, this sounds great. Wait, it's BuzzFeed? Oh, fuck that. We're not, we're not investing in BuzzFeed. To be fair, redemptions of SPACs, investors who initially committed money but later withdrew it, has been up across the board as the SPAC itself has gone out of vogue. Good thing all these other media companies are depending on it. The average redemption rate in the third quarter was 52%, up from 10% during the first three months of the year. Um... But at 94%, BuzzFeeds is far worse than average. The company received only $16 million from the initial $288 million raise. That is pathetic. $16 million. BuzzFeed's initial public offering is something of a referendum on digital media, a sector that in its boom time attracted $100 million in investments from venture capitalists. Companies like Disney and Universal, they all lined up to give money to Vice and Vox and all of these companies, and they all lost money, every single one of them to the best of my knowledge, has lost money. Um, they suffered an equally stunning fall because it's all propped up with venture capital. Real people are not reading these websites. They're garbage tier websites and they're overpaying their employees. Uh, you know, these reporters are getting over $100,000 a year to write garbage and it's not a sustainable business model. At any given moment in the past decade, investors viewed the likes of BuzzFeed as either the savior of media or a WeWork reminiscent failure. They are the WeWork of media. Um, 
Peretti said the digital media industry has been stuck in an era when everyone is imagining what they're worth. He wants journalists and investors to look past the hype cycles and focus on BuzzFeed's financials. Yep. Yep, there it is. Now the public market will make the call. How much is BuzzFeed actually worth? About five bucks. About five bucks. The market is telling us BuzzFeed should be treated differently from the New York Times. Executives at 895th Avenue, which chose BuzzFeed as its SPAC target, were attracted to its revenue multiple. Yeah, and it was it, it was down, actually. It was down uh, this last quarter. BuzzFeed looks cheap by this measure. Its market capitalization stands about one half times its annual revenue. I think it's it's they're they're massaging the numbers. Um, they're massaging the numbers. BuzzFeed executives would love to be compared to social media stocks, which command even higher valuations. They're saying, wait, two point five billion? Yeah, hell no. Snap's market capitalization is twenty four times the annual revenue, while Twitter's is eight times annual revenue. The problem is this thesis rests on the assumption that BuzzFeed is a startup with a clear path to profitability, not a 15-year-old media group past its peak. Ouch. BuzzFeed was founded in 2006. It's no longer a new disruptor. The group this year wants first Pulitzer, indicating the company still has room to grow, at least in journalism. But Rich Greenfeld from Lightshed is skeptical. If you believe that they are in hyper growth mode where it's early and they're not yet generating profits and you need to look out four or five years, sure. Question is, this is not a startup. It's been around for how many years now? Ouch. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, this is a disaster. And this is this is a pretty good indicator of, of what is gonna happen with Vox and Vice and uh, remember Gizmodo? Uh, the Gawker Group, they had a hell of a time finding a buyer for that. Um, this is it. This is this is the end game. We're in the end game now for digital media. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's only worth about five bucks a share. So I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.